In Korean skincare, there are many different types of guangs or glows that can be created through skincare, makeup, and even diet. Today, we're going to take a look at five of the most popular skin trends in Korea. Welcome to the Korean Beauty Show, where we're talking all things Korean skincare, makeup, and more. If you want to learn about the hottest trending products and ingredients straight from South Korea, then this is the podcast for you. Each week, we'll be diving in to take a look at the latest trends, as well as all the tips and tricks you need to perfect your K-beauty routine. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, professional K-beauty expert and founder of Korean beauty platform Style Story. Today's episode is brought to you by Subi Brightening Powder Cleanser, a gentle powder to foam wash that cleanses, exfoliates, and brightens your skin. Shop now at Style Story in Australia and on subibeauty.com globally. Hello and welcome back for another week, another episode of the Korean Beauty Show podcast. I am your host, Lauren Lee. I am super happy to have you here with me today. Uh, So for something a little different today, I thought what we might do is explore some of the most popular and enduring looks in Korean skincare. There are lots of them that are talked about, you know, in the media and I guess, in the news headlines, I suppose. But in terms of the ones that I think have really long staying power, like they're just very, very popular here on the ground in Korea. And there are always a lot of products and releases that are aimed, I guess, at giving people these kind of looks. I thought it might be just for a bit of fun to go through what they actually are, what they're supposed to do, some of the products that you can use to create them. So the top five that I'm going to talk about today are number one, Honey Skin, which I know a lot of you guys may have heard of, which is Gulguang in Korean. Then there is Water Skin, so water as in the water, like drinking water, I guess, which is Mul Guang. Then there is Lustrous Skin, which is Yun Guang. And these are kind of just my translations, like Yun Guang, a little bit hard to translate. So I'm just going to translate that to like Lustrous Skin. Um, Otherwise, everything ends up like probably translated roughly to like glowing, which is not that we need to be able to distinguish them a little bit. So that one we're going to call lustrous skin. And then the final one is the inner glow. And that is guang. So and then, of course, we are also going to talk about one that's not a guang, which is yuri people, which is glass skin. I'm sure you guys have all heard of that today. So some different looks that we're going to talk about. But before I jump into that, In today's K-beauty news headlines, uh, the trend of celebrity beauty lines, which I've definitely seen popping up in Western beauty a lot these days, doesn't look like it's going to show any signs of slowing down. Uh, Amore Pacific has just announced their intention to team up with a former member of the girls group, the Wonder Girls, uh, that is Sohi, to create a beauty line with her. Uh, And they've announced that that's going to be aimed at consumers in their 20s and 30s. So this is obviously not the first kind of uh, collaboration of its type. She's following in very well-trodden footsteps. Plenty of other famous Koreans have their own beauty lines. Ha G1 uh, launched her own beauty line, J1, a few years ago now, and I believe she doesn't have anything to do with the brand anymore. But that was a big one at the time. Moonshot, uh, which I know is quite popular overseas as well, that was actually launched by YG Entertainment who, if you are a K-pop fan, you will know is the entertainment agency that manages a lot of the really big K-pop groups. So this trend, I mean, in Western beauty, it seems like you'd be hard pressed to find a celebrity that doesn't have their own beauty line at the moment. Like it's just getting a little bit out of control. I would love to know, are you guys 
Uh, fans of celebrity beauty lines, is this the kind of thing that you're likely to purchase? Does it make you trust the brand more if a celebrity is behind it or does it make you trust them less? I w- I'm just super curious to know. Obviously, they're big business because people keep doing them. So come and let me know your thoughts. I am on Instagram at lauren.kbeauty. Always keen for a chat with you guys about this kind of stuff. So on to the, uh, the rest of the episode, which is to run through some of these different skin looks. So the first one I'm going to start with is one that it's not new at all, but I've noticed it's popping up in the media again recently, and that is honey skin. So I thought, why don't we go through what exactly it is? So what it is is skin that looks soft, hydrated, healthy and glowing no matter what the weather is. And this trend has been really popular in Korea for years and a whole lot of products have been created specifically to perfect this honey skin glow. So how do you get it? So it's not absolutely necessary to use products with honey in them. Um, Honey based products though are perfect for supplying the hydration and nutrition to the skin that is essential for this look. So not a a prerequisite at all by any means to use honey based products, but I think they do just tend to lend themselves to this one. So I think layering your honey or propolis based products will give you the best results and that will also enable you to create the look for your skin type as well. Obviously, if you have really, really oily skin, going in with like 15 different layers of honey based products is probably not going to be a go for you and you can probably achieve the look in fewer products, but some products that you might like to check out that I know are perfect for creating this look are... At your essence step, Skin Foods Royal Honey Propolis Enrich Essence. That's a really, really popular product, has been for years. That gives you that beautiful honey-like glow. Uh, Propolis Toners, another great way to introduce it into your routine. So COSRX's Propolis Synergy Toner, that is a bestseller at the moment on Style Story. Very, very popular product. Uh, Pretty much it seems like every time it lands, we are out of stock really quickly. We never seem to be able to get enough of them and keep them in store for very long. So that one, a very popular choice for lots of different skin types too. Um, I find essences and toners, particularly if you are more on the combination or oily side of the spectrum, are a great way to get some um, different ingredients into your routine because you can't go too nuts layering really, really heavy products like serums and lotions and creams and sleeping masks and things like that because it just tends to be a little bit too much. But you can get them in at some of those earlier, more watery steps like your essence and toner. So keep an eye out for them if you do tend to have just a little bit more of an oily complexion. Some serums, I mean, there are so many propolis serums. I literally, we could be here all day just talking about them. Um, COSRX obviously has one. Dr. Suricles is a beautiful product for people that have really, really irritated, damaged, sensitive and dry skin. April B has a really great all-rounder that is a lot more watery, and that is their Bee Pollen Propolis Ample Serum. That is a mouthful, but that is a good one to check out. Um, And then at your final step, you're aiming for, if you haven't already got that really rich glow by the end of some of your treatment steps, then the moisturizer is where it'll really come into its own. Uh, And again, these do tend to be slightly heavier products, so probably not the best fit for your oilier skin types. But uh, Tosawung has their uh, Vitaclinic Spot Whitening Cream. That gives a really nice glow that can be used for the honey skin glow. April B also has their Vitamin Propolis Moisture Cream, and that just makes the skin basically look instantly healthier. Um, if you've ever seen any before and after ones of that one, uh, you'll see what I mean. It's just like, wow, healthy skin. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so that is the look you're going for in essence with honey skin. A lots of different products that you can use and lots of different ways that you can add that into your routine. Basically, anyone can create this look. It's just about uh, finding the right products for your skin type. 
So that is honey skin. Now the second one is water skin. And this one I think is probably more popular in Korea than overseas. Uh, and basically I think it's best summed up as the look you get after showering. So when you jump out of the shower, your skin looks juicy, plump, and with an almost wet kind of sheen to it. If you watch K-dramas or Korean TV in general, you'll notice that most of the celebrities seem to favor this look like it almost looks wet their skin um so if you're not quite sure what i'm talking about go and check out just like google k-drama celebrity skin and you'll see what i mean it's it's really quite a thing to behold uh this one, probably not not the best fit, I don't think, for really oily skin types, just because I think it probably could veer more into looking just like an oil slick rather than watery. But, you know, check it out and see. Try for yourself. Um, I have dry skin, so I'm not the best one. I, I've never tried with the Mulgong water skin on oily skin before, so try it out and see how you go. Um, how can you get it? Okay, so the condition of the skin itself is really, really important for this one. So you need to have your skin in tip-top shape, otherwise you're just not going to get there. So you'll need to have really, really nailed the dewiness of your skin and you're going to want to pump it full of hydration. So ingredients like hyaluronic acid, glycerin and your oils are ideal for this and and again, you're going to probably have to layer your products as well. Um, two products that I really like for creating this look. One is D'Alba's White Truffle Anti-Wrinkle Cream. And they describe it as almost like a balm. And I think that's a good way to describe it. So that one. And then you can go over the top with Jellico Cherry Blossom Sleeping Mask. That will give you that Mulguang look. Like, ah. Uh, I don't know, it's similar-ish to the glazed donut look in some ways, I guess. It is similar. It is similar, but probably looks less sticky. I think it looks less sticky. I think it does, yeah. All of these, like, you know, there there are shades. It's not like totally different. You know, there, there's so many skin trends and looks at the moment. A lot of them kind of look similar. Uh, but water skin, I think if you see someone that's done it really, really well, you'll you'll be like, okay, that's it. Now, Korean BB creams are the other thing that you're probably going to need for achieving this look. Um, obviously, my personal favorite is Skin 79's Pink BB Cream. That's what I use to uh, get the, this kind of like finish on my face. Uh, not all Korean BB creams will give you the water skin look, um, but you're gonna want something that I guess really allows the dewiness to show through in your skin. So whatever BB cream you're choosing, you're not gonna get there with foundation, I wouldn't have thought. Um, definitely not with a Western foundation, I don't think. I think I would definitely stick to Korean BB creams and one that has like a dewy finish because matte is basically the absolute opposite of this look. So that's just some tips for if you're wanting to try out the water skin look. As I said, it's not as popular overseas as some of the other ones. Um, but I think that's also because so many Korean celebrities just have this amazing skin and, you know, why not show it off with a finish like this? That could be why. Um, glass skin is the next one I had on my list. So this has obviously been doing the rounds for so long. Really, really, really popular. Basically, the direct translation in Korean is literally glass skin, yuri pibu. So the idea was that it was skin that looks as smooth and poreless as a pane of glass. So it's translucent, it's toned, it's hydrated, it's healthy and fresh. Uh, and that's it. So how do you get it? Layering, I think, is the total key to this one, and also obviously hydration. Uh, because if your skin is looking like a pane of glass, then it's not going to have any obvious wrinkles or anything like that. So you're going to really need to plump it full of hydration to soften the look of any fine lines and wrinkles. Uh, sheet masks are a really great way to get some of that hydration in. A misting spray like D'Alba Piedmont's First Spray Serum is a really, really great option. 
And our Jellico Bubble Tea Steam Cream is a total cheap way to get the glass skin look. It will give you that, and that's because it is an oil in cream formula, and it has the benefits of a serum as well. So there are lots of different articles and things like that floating around out there about how to do it. I think as a bare minimum, you are probably going to need to do your double cleanse, tone, essence, sheet mask, serum, and then moisturizer, I think, just to get that all of the hydration that you really need. But again, make sure that you're picking products that are right for your skin type. So if you are going to go in with like a heavier oil and cream formula as your moisturizer and you have oily skin, you're not going to have wanted to do all these other steps before. So you'll have to just mix and match and see. Um, you shouldn't come out looking like an oil slick if you've done it right it should really just look like glowing and glass skin if you if you really nail it so that is i mean yeah there's been so much said on glass skin so i don't think i need to go into that in too much detail the next one is yunguang which is lustrous skin or that's how i'm translating it and what it is is similar to strobing so you're trying to place a strategic sheen on the high planes of your face. So basically, if you think of the areas where the sun would touch your face and you want to basically highlight those. So makeup is really, really important for this look as well. Obviously, you, you need to do your skincare, prep it and have it, you know, the right base for it. So make sure you're just starting off with really nicely hydrated, moisturized skin. But for your makeup, most Koreans will start off with a rose or pink colored primer. And that really look, leaves the skin looking just instantly fresher and healthier before you start your BB cream or foundation. There are a couple of ways that I've tried to incorporate this in. So uh, Espoir has a sunscreen, water splash sun cream. And this one, I think the best way to describe that is a combination between a base or a primer and a sunscreen together in one product. So it really does give you like this lustrous looking skin just from your first base. Um, it's not a tone up cream that it's a bit different from that because it has this pink color to it. Someone was asking me about that the other day. So not a tone up cream in the sense that it'll leave your complexion brighter, but it just gives you look, it just leaves you looking healthier and, you know, with a bit of a pink glow, I guess. Another product that does that quite nicely is Hamish's Artless Glow Base. Uh, that one is not a sunscreen like the splash sun cream is, but it is a primer and it gives a similar look, I would say. So they're two good options to start. Now, instead of foundation, um, I would opt for either a cushion, a Korean BB cushion or a BB cream that lets the, the skin's natural light shine through. That's pretty important for this look. You don't want to look cakey or like you're wearing a lot of makeup that's going to ruin the look. So look, there probably are foundations out there that you can achieve that. But I find, I tend to find with the Western foundations, if they are really sheer, um, like the Giorgio Armani one, something like that, they don't give you the right amount of coverage that you actually need to like, you know, act as a proper base for your skin. Whereas for whatever reason, Korean BB creams, I just find cover what needs to be covered, but still let that skin's natural light shine through. And that is really, really important for these kind of looks. So then once you've done your base, you're going to move on to strobing. And that is a makeup technique. And it does use the shimmery shades of highlighter to accentuate the places where the light naturally touches the face. So obviously, there are plenty of different highlighting products out there. I know Too Cool for School has an art class by Rodin um, contouring palette that is perfect for this look. Um, but I mean, you can use whatever products you would normally use for highlighting. Um, if you've ever tried strobing before, you can totally use that for this look as well. Uh, so this one, I would probably describe more as a makeup look than uh, a skincare look, I would say. I think you're not going to get there with skincare alone. It's really important um, having the right base and then also highlighting and accentuating the right areas of the face as well. So that's one to try out, the lustrous skin or you 
um, just if you haven't tried it before, if you're keen to try it out and see if it suits you. And then the last one I had was the Sokwang, which is the inner glow. Sometimes I see it translated as lit from within skin, which, you know, that basically has the same meaning. So yeah, this is the subtlest of all of the guangs or glows, and it is the healthy glow that you get from taking care of yourself from the inside out. So how to get it? Uh, a diet of fresh fruit and vegetables, plenty of water and supplements, including solu soluble collagen are apparently the keys to nailing this look. Uh, and Koreans also do usually finish their meals with fruits rather than a sweet dessert. Well, this is traditionally. I mean, these days it's kind of whatever goes. But traditionally, rather than eating like something really, really sweet, they would just have um, slashed fruits. And that's also another great way to ensure that your skin does look and stay healthy and naturally glowing. So skincare, again, like... I think there's not any particular products that you really need to use for this. It's the opposite of some of the more out there glows though. So I guess products like Ilium Ceramide Atos Concentrate Cream, that would be the kind of just really natural looking, like it doesn't give you like glowing skin or glass skin or anything like that. It's just a nice basic moisturizer that, um, you know, it cares for your skin and keeps it looking healthy. That's the kind of product I guess you'd be trying to use to go for this Sokgong. Um, so, you know, there's no set routine or anything like that. The idea is basically that you will look healthy from keeping healthy yourself rather than, you know, I guess putting all these different products on to create a particular look uh, and no like makeup really suggestions for this one either i mean pr probably just keep it natural but the idea of this is just to to um to treat your skin nourish it and keep it healthy from the inside out and i mean that's a pretty simple concept i guess achieving it in reality is a lot harder uh i know because you know there's just so many things that uh can steer us down the, the bad path when it comes to you know keeping our diet on track particularly at the moment with all the stress that everyone is under with the pandemic that keeps going on so this one i think is in many ways it sounds the simplest but is probably actually the hardest is to get a healthy glow just from taking care of yourself um but i'm super keen to know have you guys ever tried any of these glows or guangs or yuri people i mean there's so much written about them the western media seems to really really love um, all of the different skin trends i guess i totally get it you know it is a little bit different from what we have traditionally talked about in uh Western skincare, I guess. A lot of these looks really do come from, you know, the kinds of things that people are seeing on TV in Korea. Obviously, you know, people are very influenced by what a celebrity skin looks like in a drama and they ask them for their routine and what, what they eat and, you know, what they do to get their skin looking like that. So these are just the, the main ones that I see popping up again and again. And, you know, products will say on the back of them, you know, you can use this to achieve this kind of skin type. So these, I just thought I'd share them with you um, because we haven't talked about them on the show before so why not <laughs> so that's all I had for this week for the podcast I hope you enjoyed if you did you know I would always love to hear what you thought if you would be so kind as to share a rating so that other people can know your thoughts as well uh, and then of course if you haven't already make sure that you hit follow in your podcast app or subscribe so that you don't miss any more episodes and until then, I will see you on Style Story. 